Okay, let's go with me. Let's talk about me for a second. Um, I'm going to talk about my clothes. I'm trying to find examples we're all going to know, and one thing I know that you all know is me. So let's talk about my clothing choices. Um, you'll notice, for example, I never come to school wearing a tie. I don't wear ties. I don't wear ties and suits. Um, you, you've never seen me before come to school wearing a suit where the pants match the jacket. Um, and you've never seen me before wearing a tie. I don't dress like that for school. Why? Because the kinds of people that wear suits and ties are, it's a group I want to disaffiliate with. When you look at our neighborhood, my BMCC, the people that wear suits and ties um, tend to be rich people and they tend to be um, like, in our building, it's, it's administration, uh, not the faculty. Some faculty, can, obviously there are exceptions, um, but, but most of the, the suits and ties are worn by uh, the administration. Um, they're also worn by the Wall Street guys. And in our neighborhood, I do not want to be mistaken for an administrator or for Wall Street guys, because that is not the group I want to be associated with. Also, my students um, often have a history of problems. People in suits and ties cause my students fucking problems. So you know what I don't want to do is associate myself with people that wear suits and ties, because then my students are going to look at me and they're going to go, this guy is wearing a suit and tie. People that wear suit and ties cause me fucking problems. And then they're going to think I'm, I'm going to cause them problems. And I don't I want to indicate that. Um, notice also, though, that I tend to wear things um, that, that don't where I don't fully look like a student either. So for example, you'll often see me come to class wearing a jeans, um, but a suit jacket. I'll, so I'll put jeans and a t-shirt with a suit jacket on top. Um, it's youthful, it associates me with the students, but it doesn't fully associate with my, with my students. There's a little difference on wearing a suit jacket on top. So my students wear t-shirt and jeans. I wear t-shirt and jeans, but I put a blazer on top because I want to indicate, yes, I'm on your side, but also uh, part of me is associated with the, I'm also in charge, right? Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a move on my part to affiliate with students a bit, but also to affiliate with faculty a bit, but disaffiliate with administration. Um, you'll also notice and this, uh, is that I, I often wear crazy shoes. Um, I have a lot of shoes with crazy colors. I have silver boots. I have these crazy bonker. I have pink. I have, I have these fancy shoes, but they're like black and pink. Um, and I have sort of, I, I have a lot of fancy footwear. I, I spend a lot of money on shoes. Um, I really like shoes. Um, and occasionally I have interesting jackets um, where I'll have like the, the tweed with the little silver bits in it um, with the sparkles and the cuffs. Um, and so I have these, I have, you know, you've seen me doing videos in that crazy gold coat. Um, one of the things I'm trying to do there is, is make it clear visibly I am affiliating myself with LGBTQ folks and women. Um, actually, the, a lot of my jackets, uh, the gold jacket, the silver jacket, uh, those were bought at a women's clothing store. Uh, I do that because I like women and I like LGBTQ people and I want to indicate I am supportive of those groups. Um, so I dress like that because I am affiliating with those groups. Now, am I faking this? No, I fucking love that jacket. I look great in that jacket. I'm also five foot three and that's women's clothing stores is where you get clothes that actually fit me. Um, but the point is, is that I wear these things, um, because in Donald Trump's America, I want to make it clear from very far away who I voted for and the jacket and the shoes communicate that to people in a way that if I wore a suit and tie with brown shoes, people would be like, I don't know who that guy voted for. But when I show up in a solid gold fucking coat, people go, oh, okay. Um, it's a, it's, 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 I'm indicating groups. Um, I had a, an exchange with my wife once. She went to buy Doc Martens. Those are the kind of like black military looking boots. And she bought a couple of pairs. She bought like a pair of Doc, maybe two pairs of Doc Martens. And she, you know, she bought them and we, we were leaving the store and she said, uh, you should get a pair of those. And I said, I don't like those shoes. And she was like, what? You don't like Doc Martens? She says, if I had known you didn't like Doc Martens, maybe I wouldn't have, you know, paid so much money to get these cool shoes if I knew you didn't like them. And I said to her, honey, I like them on you. You look fucking cool wearing Doc Martin boots. I said, but I am a middle-aged, bald, white guy. If I put Doc Martens on, it's going to make me look a little bit like a 
fucking Nazi. And I don't want to look like a Nazi. Um, cause the, the, the sort of, the sort of standard Nazi uniform is the military style boots, jeans, white guy, shaved head. Um, and I do not want anybody thinking I have any affiliation with groups like that. And so I don't wear serious manly shoes um, because the, like, the, the military shit, um, because I'm fundamentally, I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So I don't really want to wear like faux military shit. Also, I think wearing faux military shit, um, like a, some, you, there's a style of jacket too that is kind of faux military. And I don't like wearing them um, because my students are really in the military and it feels like a cosplay or something. So the point is, is that the outfits that you choose um, affiliate you with certain groups. Um, the alcohol that you drink affiliates you with certain groups. Um, and it is the same for music taste, for um, uh, for taste in movies, for taste in books, for taste in plays. Um, I'll tell you another story about myself, because that's what I'm doing today. The problem is, is that if I had you in front of me, I would ask you guys for examples, and please, in the comments, put some examples. Um, but because you're not here to talk to, um, either the only person in the room with me right now, uh, not really a room, I'm outside, um, but the only person in the room with me right now is me, and so I'm drawing all my examples from me. So I apologize for being such a fucking narcissist, but you know, I'm all, I'm, I'm all I have to work with right now. But please provide your own examples in the comments. Um, okay, a friend of mine said that my camera work was making her sick, but I kind of don't care because I, I have to walk. It's too cold out here to stay still. And also I want to walk around. So um, I'll give you another example from my, oh shit, what was I talking about? I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, for a while, I, you know, I, I read Shakespeare obsessively. I've been reading, I've read a hundred Shakespeare books in the last four years. Um, and I've seen like a hundred Shakespeare movies. I'm obsessed. I always have a Shakespeare book. And one thing I discovered, when you carry around a Shakespeare book, on the subway, a physical book, because I don't, I don't do e-readers, I do everything physically. So when you carry around a physical Shakespeare book, what I discovered is people come right up to me and they ask me for directions. They go, does the N train go to Queens? And does the, can I get on the four or five? Or do I have to take the four? They always, they, I'm standing on the subway platform and I cannot tell you this, guys, the number of people who fucking ask me for subway directions if I am carrying a Shakespeare book, why? Because carrying around a physical Shakespeare book makes me seem trustworthy. I have a copy of Hamlet. People go, he's smart. He's probably nice. Because people that read Shakespeare tend to be, you know, I don't know, words, with a Wordsworth stereotype is they're more sensitive than other people. People who care about poetry and Shakespeare and these things, they're already, they're friendly. Um, they're nice. They're kind. I'm probably an intellectual of some kind. And so I enjoy talking to people and answering questions. Um, it advertises myself as an intellectual. Um, and so they ask me for, for subway directions. Um, I'm also, uh, my next reading project after I finish Shakespeare is I'm going to read the King James Bible. It is a gig um, I've got a version that has like half footnotes, so it's, it's it, however big you think a Bible is, this is twice as big. So I'm going to read the King James Bible from cover to cover, and I got a hunch that when I carry a King James Bible with me on the subway, a gigantic book like this, when I carry the King James Bible with me on the subway, nobody's going to fucking ask me for directions. Why? Because they gonna, they're going to think... It's going gonna, it's gonna to look like I'm affiliating myself with very serious, a serious kind of evangelical Christian. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a believer at all. I'm reading it because it's a book that Shakespeare liked and I want to see, I want to read the whole thing. Um, but it, they're not going to know that. They're just going to see a guy carrying a Bible and they're not going to want to talk to me because they're going to think if they start a conversation with me, hey, does the end train go to Queens? I'm going to say, excuse me. Yes, it does. And can you spare a few minutes to talk about the Lord? Um, they're gonna, I guarantee you, they're going to stay the fuck away from me when I'm lugging around a 1,500-page Bible. Because um, they're going to think I'm some kind of religious zealot who prays every day and who reads the Bible and has me, you know, they're going to they're gonna think it's intense to carry, to, to choose to carry around a 1,500-page book is an intense choice. It associates me with certain kinds of very intense religious people who would never leave home without a Bible and would read it constantly, and they're going to stay the fuck away from me. But the Shakespeare book, they're going to want to talk to me um, because that seems more friendly and approachable. So the point is, is that this is what Bourdieu thinks art is. He thinks it's all essentially a form of self-advertisement, um, but that you've brainwashed yourself into liking all the stuff that you like.
Ooh. Okay, well, this is going pretty good. I'm in a good mood now. I've gotten, it's taken me a while to get into this, but I'm starting to kind of, I'm really glad I got this selfie stick. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.